Hello everyone, Yanni Plays here and today I would like to show you how to build an item elevator. Now if you are just here for a block by block tutorial, I will put the timestamp down in the description so you can jump right to that. However, I really recommend to stick around because in my tutorials I like to explain how something works and why something works. And if you understand the reason behind a redstone circuit or redstone contraptions then you can take this knowledge and put it into a different contraption that you may build or a different circuit that you need. So what we have here is one of my item elevators. So we have the bottom of my iron farm over here. The items drop in, they go through the hopper line. And yes, I took one hopper out to interrupt everything so I can show everything. And then the items are being sent up to my storage system. Well, let's look at how this item elevator works. Let's drop some iron in here. And you can see the circuit lights up, everything flashes. We have the iron going into our hoppers, it goes into the bottom hopper and you see it is being outputted as soon as it comes in. Now, how does that exactly work? So we have a comparator here and the comparator is comparing what signal is coming from here. Now in Java edition, a comparator can pull the signal through one solid block. I believe that does not work on the bedrock edition. So we're pulling the signal strength of one out of here and this comparator is then bringing the signal strength of one over to this redstone dust. This redstone dust of one is then powering this block and our repeater is picking that up. Since the repeater is boosting the signal to 15, that means that over here we are going to get a signal of 15. So let's look at that one more time. So you can see we have a signal strength of one here and a signal strength of 15 over here. Now you may be wondering, well, but Yanni, why exactly is it flashing? Because if we have a constant stream of items coming through here, then this comparator should be constantly lit, right? Well, a comparator is not only looking what is coming in, a comparator is also comparing what is coming in and what is coming from the side. And if the signal strength from the side is stronger than the signal strength that's coming from the back, then the signal from the back is being interrupted. So. And as soon as this signal here is interrupted, we of course turn this one off and therefore we are turning the repeater off, what then is turning off this redstone dust. As soon as this redstone dust is not powered with 15 anymore, that means that this comparator is open again and we can have the next input coming through until the whole clock resets. Now, how are the items going up this item elevator? Well, as soon as this redstone dust here changes to 15 or changes down to zero, this observer here is going to detect that and is then powering this dropper down here and also the dropper above. An observer can power straight through and can power diagonally. So that means the item that comes in is now already being pushed into this dropper up here. So now we have to continue powering the droppers from here. The way we do that is with a different observer and this observer is facing down and looking at the same redstone dust and is then pulsing this node block. Now this not doesn't necessarily have to be a node block, you also could use a redstone lamp. Uh, we just need a block that is changing as soon as an input comes in. And this signal change is then detected by this observer here and this observer faces the same way as the one down here and therefore is powering this dropper here and the dropper above and on this side you can see that this just continues node block observer node block observer until we're all the way at the top 
So on the top, you have a few different things that you can do. In my case, this dropper is spitting the items into a hopper chain and the hoppers are bringing the items away. You also could have that input into a water stream or you can have it input into a chest. Now, if you set up a chest up here, uh, just remember that once the chest is full, it is going to clock your system and you're going to have more and more items that are not going to be able to make it all the way to the top and at the end you end up with a clocked system. Now to clean a clocked system that is fairly simple. All you have to do is take another observer and put the observer down this way so that the two faces are looking into each other and you have a simple redstone clock and with each tick one item is being flushed out at the top. Now, while we head over to the melon farm, if you could hit that like button for me, that would mean a lot for me. And if you like the style of tutorial that I'm giving here, uh, consider subscribing. It's free, you can always unsubscribe if you, if you don't like my content. So over here at my melon farm, I'm having way more melons than I could ever use. Now what I did is, I set up a few composters so that I'm going to get bone meal but of course I don't want to go down here into the dungeon every time to pick up my bone wheel. So how about we build an item elevator? In here you can see all the items that you are going to need to build this item elevator. Now of course depending on how high you're going to build it, you are going to need more node blocks, observers or droppers. The line here is going to be 5 blocks high, so 5 droppers high. Now, whenever I build a redstone contraptions, I always put a different colored block down because I don't want to end up digging into this room from the bottom and by accident dig up this dirt or dig up some stone and then have to redo a part of my redstone contraptions. So you can put down uh, colored concrete, you can use glass, you can use netherrack if you're in the overworld, uh, you can use wool, just use something that stands out so when you by accident dig into it you have a visual warning and you are going to stop before something bad happens. So what we did here is we have a 5x2 pad and the dropper line is going right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to stack my droppers. And of course, when you stack them, you have to crouch so that you can put a dropper on top of the one before. Now down here, we can set up our blocks. As you remember, we have the hopper line coming in over here. And next to it, we have our first concrete block. Then we have one block over here and one in this corner over there. Coming out of this block that connects to the hopper line, we have our comparator and we leave the comparator on its standard state. So we're not going to change it to the duct mode. In the back corner, we are putting one redstone dust. And next to the comparator, we put another redstone dust. Then we stand on this back block and we put down our repeater and the repeater is facing into the dropper line. That is the bottom part of the clock already completed. So next we have to put our observers and our node blocks in. First, the bottom server observes or looks to the redstone, so that's why we stand here. We look at the redstone and we place this observer so that the face is going towards the observer. Next we put one observer on top and then we go node block, observer, node block until we are at the top. Now, I don't want that this node block is making a lot of noise all the time, so that's why I am going to put a solid block on top of it. Next, on each of the node blocks, we have to have an observer looking into the node block and powering the dropper behind it. 
Now, if you have a very tall uh, item elevator, I recommend building both of them at the same time, so it's easier to place the uh, observers in between. Now, the last thing that we have to do is put a chest on top of our last dropper so that the items have a place to be outputted to. Now the item elevator is ready. As you can see, I already have bone meal in here. So all I have to do is put in the last hopper to connect this line. You can see our clock starts working. And if we look in this chest, we already have the first pieces of bone meal coming up. I hope this video helped you build your item elevator. Please don't forget to leave a like. If you have any questions, put them down into the comments. And if you would like to see more tutorials like this one here, uh, consider subscribing. Thank you and have a wonderful day.